Aloha, party people. You are listening to Inside the Desert Oasis Room, episode number 158. This episode is sponsored by Tandawai Rum, the world's largest rum producer and winner of over 170 international medals in the past four decades. Check out their webpage at tandawaiusa.com or follow them on Facebook or Instagram at tandawaiusa. This episode is sponsored by the Tiki Bar T-Shirt Club, where their monthly t-shirt designs pay tribute to a Polynesian bar or restaurant from days long past. Each design is available for a limited time and will never be produced again. For the collectors out there, be sure to check out their subscription program, where they offer a discounted 3, 6, or 12-month plan. For more information and to check out this month's shirt, visit tikibartshirtclub.com. This podcast is also sponsored by the Tonga Hut. With locations in both North Hollywood and Palm Springs, California, the Tonga Hut serves classic tiki cocktails in a classic tiki setting. Dine in a secret tiki hideaway or learn about rum and rum history at one of their educational seminars. And if you're up to the challenge, take the journey to join the loyal order of drooling bastards. For information on events, rum rum club, and more, go to tongahut.com or find them on Facebook or Instagram. Today, we welcome John Philbin back to the podcast. You might know John from his various movie characters over the past three decades, including Turtle in North Shore, Nathaniel in Point Break, Tom McClory in Tombstone, Chuck in Return of the Living Dead, Amos in Children of the Corn, and much, much more. On this episode, we chat about what's happened in his life since our last chat, along with his current film projects, including White Wolves, Ghost Babe, and Undateable John, now playing on Amazon Prime. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did bringing it to you. If you enjoy this podcast, please give us a good rating. Doing so helps people find the show and helps boost our presence. Also, subscribing makes it easier for you to follow our adventures, and subscribers always get new releases first. You can find previous episodes at our website, DesertOasisRoom.com as well as links to our social media, along with links to our guests' websites and their social media. And if you'd like to leave us a tip, click on the tip jar. All righty, pull up a chair and join me and my conversation with my friend, John Philbin. Thank you, John, for joining us again on the podcast. You're welcome. It's I appreciate good to it be so here. much. It's been about a year, year and a half since we last chatted, and so much has happened in that time. I want to start by talking about you know you you, you went through some adversity last year when you lost your house. Yes, I was one of the many people that lost. Everything to the Woolsey fire, except, yeah. you know, my, my life and my car. I had a car and two surfboards that I kept and a passport. But I lost all my art, all my pictures of my youth and all the movies I'd ever done, all my furniture. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's great. All my clothes, you know, that I've c- collected over the years, classic shirts from movies and movie scripts, original scripts signed. Oh, my God. Wow. What was that like well, I, I I didn't expect that I was going to lose all that. I just didn't know that, you know, I got a call. I got someone banged on the door like six in the morning and said, hey, we got to go. And I'm like, why? Because there's a big fire. It jumped the 101. It's coming this way. We called a couple of fire departments and got a hold of the third one. And they said, you need to leave right now. So I just shoved these. I was getting ready to take a trip in a couple of days the Marshall Islands and I just took these two brand new boards I just picked up and my passport and I, I go well right. I'll be back here this afternoon they, they will never let this place burn it's too there's too many horses and yeah. there's a hotel next door and guests and they'll never let this burn they'll just put airplanes they'll put it out it's down at the 101 and by the time I got to PCH down Canaan where I lived was just an inferno just a huge 
cloud pyro cloud unbelievable and so and you know and three days later i saw a picture of what was the property and it was just everything was just melted and i was just devastated and i'd never experienced that before so i didn't know what was going to happen to me but i took a i took a trip right away i was like people are like do you still want to go on this trip you just lost everything i'm like yeah i think it's a the right thing to do <laughs> yeah yeah what else am i gonna do so i went to the on this trip to the marshall islands it's this beautiful tropical place with good friends of mine and i look at pictures of me there and i was i was suffering from this thing called anhedonia where it's a form of ptsd where it's where nothing interests you things that used to really give you pleasure do not give you pleasure there it's impossible to get pleasure and that's a result of this the fire of yeah, the loss? Yeah, it's a, it's a reaction to, it's a PTSD s- symptom that happens to people who go through traumatic events like yeah, the fire, yeah. like losing everything in a fire. It's so like you don't know what you're going through. All of a sudden you're like, like you're depressed. And, you're like, and you don't realize it because you, then you, then you, I went to a shrink and she was like, yeah, you're suffering a PTSD from the fire. Wow. The fire triggered PTSD in you. You know, at that time, you posted a few things on social media, and you seemed to be coping with it very well. Yeah, people said that, and I was. I mean, part of me coping with it was admitting the reality of what I was going through and what everyone had to go through who was a victim of that fire. Yeah. Which, you know like you said life goes on and it couldn't have happened to someone more prepared like i i've lost everything before in, oh you have in my life okay yeah and and i've i've survived natural phenomenon like the tsunami in indonesia and stuff and i personally my own personal you know battles with alcoholism and drug addiction i've lost everything i've ever right, owned right, because of right. that before so i was kind of ready to you know to I was like, oh here we go again I'm gonna start I have nothing I'm gonna start from scratch yeah and I did and it's been I decided I would gonna take a year off and not move back and not start my surf school up or anything and just travel and I, so I traveled about six months out of the year and then and the anniversary of the one year from the fire then I got my own place and that's where we are now this beautiful place it. in Topanga and it's so, so beautiful. It, it is beautiful. We're right in the middle of Topanga Canyon. So for our listeners, obviously can't see what I'm seeing. Uh, it's like this property was built a, around nature. Yeah. Right? You have these giant trees here. Yeah. It's like a tree house. Yeah. A <laughs> it's huge, totally sprawling, it's like a giant tree house. Rambling tree house. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I love I, it. I love it too. I think it's, it's so peaceful. And it just feels, it, it, it feels, feels very, good, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what else to say other than the word peaceful is the first thing that comes to mind. With this fire and losing everything, you know, when the last time you were on the podcast, and I don't remember if this was a story you told me, you know, just from when I last saw you or saw you on the podcast. Um, we see each other at these cool events. Yeah, yeah, every once, <laughs> every once in a while. And you had told me a story about... A motorcycle. I, I'm going to do some name dropping here. Go for it. A motorcycle that was given to Matt Adler from George Clooney. Right. And then, and it was a motorcycle that you really admired, and Smoked. then Matt gave it to you. That's right. And Matt, you see, George, first, Matt was the first one before George to say, I'm over two wheels. You know, he's married, yeah, Lori's yeah. got a kid, and he almost got, you know, people make left turns, they look at you, and you're thinking, God, you've just murdered me. You can see their eyes and everything. Yeah. They see you, and they'll turn in front of you where, and you're just thinking, you've just, you've killed me. You've just killed me. But it happened to him twice in a week, and he's like, I'm done. I'm done with two wheels. And he gave me that bike. Yeah. And I was just going, I'll, fucking, I'll just start up with, uh, uh, two. it's been a long time since I've had a motorcycle. Right, right. And the last time I saw you, I asked you, did you lose the bike in the fire? Of course. And you said, yeah, I lost everything. Yeah, melted into a puddle. I mean, I couldn't save the bike and the car, you know, I had to put my boards in the car and go. Yeah. I thought I was coming back, though, believe me. Right. I, I did not yeah, think no, I'm no leaving one, no here No one forever. ever thinks that. Yeah, I mean, just... That's the way the world works sometimes, though, you know? Yeah. It's it's weird when you look at the way that a fire moves through a canyon. 
it might burn everything around one house that just did not get touched you know yeah or it might pick and choose on a street i want this house this house this house this house and everything else comes out unscathed it's 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 really it's really unusual how that works yeah but how did that change your perspective on on your, on the way that you see life now life and and say the material possessions do, do you look at things differently now because of that well be, like i said i've i've lost everything thing before and so i have a acute awareness that you know i appreciate cool things i love my surfboards and i love my art i love my pictures i love my motorcycle i love the clothes that i had decided were mine over the 50 years of yeah, life yeah but they're all you know i'm much more interested in quality of life sure style location sure, yeah, yeah. and health all these things are t you know temporary it can be destroyed and taken from you and whatever so I don't invest my happiness in things but I haven't done that ever yeah, I, you yeah. know I think I went through a dark stage in the 80s when okay. I was like into things but well, I don't define myself by what I have I also think that you know in the 80s you were a young guy you were in your 20s so we all go through that in our 20s right we all want the latest coolest thing and we all want to have what our friends have or something better than what our friends have you know there's there's that's just part of maturing yeah know? so i by the way you know i shopped for motorcycles for the whole year and i selected a triumph bobber black which is parked out front and it is the coolest fucking bike i have ever yeah. had I, yeah. it's the coolest bike i've ever seen and it's the my favorite bike i've ever ridden yeah it is fantastic and i bought it brand new and i broke it in and i love it i ride it all the time now. yeah yeah i love it that's awesome well yeah. the last time i saw you I don't remember what kind of bike you were riding then, but probably, you, you did ride a bike to where we met. So. Yeah, it was probably a Honda Magna. Someone, I mean, I was living at the time in this place at Playa del Rey where the landlady, her sister lost two houses in the fire. Oh, my God. And their parents had a couple other houses in Malibu, and in one of them was this old motorcycle that they're their dad was not allowed to ride anymore because he's like 80, 90 years old. And she's like, if you can get that thing out of here, you can have it. And I was like, I put it on a truck and with a friend of mine and we took it and some guys, you know, got it started. And I just rode that around for a while. And I went, I want a my bike, yeah, yeah, my yeah, own yeah. bike. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I had that for a while. And it was, they were so generous to me, yeah. the clients for him. They're very kind. That's nice. So a lot of people were very kind to victims of the Woolsey fire. Quicksilver gave, gave us a bunch of clothes and stuff, stuff I would never be able to afford to buy. I've got like some really nice yeah, wardrobe yeah. pieces now. <laughs> they, they, um, they had this kind of, uh, what was it that happened right afterwards that you were involved with that, that was down at one of the surf shops down there? Yeah, I was at Board Riders Club at Topanga and PCH, and Quicksilver had a Woolsey Fire giveaway. Yeah. And they had just boxes and boxes of great wow. stuff. And That's it, awesome. I was like, well, what do, what do I get? He goes, you can have anything you want here. Just take anything you want, anything. I'm like, like more than one item? He goes, yeah, anything. Wow. Everything and anything you want. Wow. Like super generous Quicksilver. So now I wear a bunch of Quicksilver clothes. That's awesome, coats. man. Yeah. Totally yeah awesome. Awesome. Shout out to Quicksilver. Awesome Quicksilver. Yeah, that Thank is great. you, Quicksilver. That is great. Vans did it as well up further up. Vans gave a bunch of stuff away. Shoes yeah. and shirts. Super cool. Surf companies were really kind to Malibu after yeah. the fire. Yeah. Really kind. That's awesome. You know, speaking about these kind of... You, you seem to be like... Always in the eye of the the hurricane. I, <laughs> I want to talk about G Land, <laughs> okay? Because you recently traveled back there on the twenty fifth anniversary of a tsunami that almost killed you. Yeah. So and a bunch of other guys. Let, let's talk about G Land for a second. For our listeners that are not familiar, let's let's first tell them 
what G Land is and why everybody likes to go there. Okay, G Land stands for Grajigan. G Land is a, like the first and the best alpha and omega of surf camps. And since the 80s, but it started in the 70s, Bobby Radiasa has, has had a camp at the point of G Land where, you know, like Jerry Lopez and Peter McCabe and these people have come for, for, you know, 30, 40 years. And I'm one of them. I started going in the early 80s and I've been, you know, I went every summer for years and then it was every other summer and then it was every, but, you know, I came back, I, I just happened to be there when there was a tsunami. There was an earthquake out in the Indian Ocean. In the, in the, yeah. Created a tsunami which destroyed the camp. And it was a 7.2. Ooh. Yeah. I looked it up. 7.2. And that's strong by, I mean, by any standard. Even in a, a town that is like Los Angeles that's built to withstand heavy earthquakes. And yeah. we're talking about in Indonesia where you're you're sleeping on the beach. Yeah, it was out in the ocean though. This this right, particular right, right, earthquake right. and it created three tsunamis that came in and destroyed the camp. Now, I they had a re, Bobby goes, "Let's have a reunion for all the survivors." And I'm like, "Great, I'll be there." And I didn't know the stories of the different survivors. I hadn't oh. heard the Simon Law's story or Robbie Bain's Rob Bain's story. Or Monty Weber's story of what what the wave was like. I had mine, yeah. But they, I got to hear all their personal experiences and how similar they were, and how they all, as well as I did, went through a post traumatic stress disorder because of the tsunami. Some people couldn't come to the reunion because they're too frightened to return. To wow! That place because it changed their life. Simon Law went back to Australia. He was a pro surfer. And started a surf store called Tsunami Surf, uh-huh. and that's the name of his life. You know, his life has been informed by that event. Wow! And he was, it was magic. We had we had beautiful ceremonies on the beach because a lot of people lost their lives, you know, wow. to that tsunami. But the surfer survived. But a lot of Indonesian fishermen and people that lived on the point were killed. And we had these beautiful prayer, you know, ceremonies and these dancers. And Bobby threw a huge party for all of us. And we, and Monty Weber did a, a film, a documentary about it that I, tracks I it. picked up. And it was really beautiful. I actually, I enjoyed it so much. I was, it's, I wish it was longer. I think that there's, I, a, I, I think that there's an interesting story there. Totally. I wish it was totally longer. Yeah. <laughs> but I loved seeing it and hearing all the stories from all those guys who I hadn't, talked to in 20 since in 25 years yeah so it was cool so tell us a little bit about what that was like because you said you described hearing the surf and thinking it must be big and the air quote is saying is but when the roar grew louder i sat up inside my mosquito net and just as i did a churning wall of water blew through my hut did you think you were dreaming nope I you didn't. Knew. You knew. I knew that I was underwater and awake. When I started to pass out from drowning, then I started to have hallucinations, which were like dream, was like dreaming. I was hallucinating. I okay. was dying. And what my fantasy, my dream was, is that I was holding on to a surfboard underwater and jettisoning to, yeah, to, yeah. to the surface. And that, that I was going to pop up and be able to breathe oxygen and see like volcano tips and other survivors popping up, holding on to their surfboards. That was my last thought before the wave surged back out to sea and ripped the roof off my hut and I ripped out of my mosquito net and stood up and I could breathe. And right then, as the water was sucking back out to sea, my surfboard, which had been tossed up into the jungle, was on its way back out to the sea and it hit me right in the leg and I just, it hit me right in the leg and I just picked it up Wow. And the water sucked down and I just ran into the jungle yelling to everyone, grab a board, grab a board. Well, once thinking, because that was my last thought. As I ran into the jungle, I ran by Monty Weber's shack and people were coming out going, what the, f- what, what happened? Because they weren't underwater the whole time. Some people were, but some people weren't. And I, I, he heard me go, grab a board. And he goes, oh, is that what we're doing? We're, we're grabbing boards. Because someone just said that. And so he ran down into the bay where it was dry. 
and just covered in dead things and went to pick up a board and the board was shredded into like seven pieces wow. and he was like what's wrong with this picture and he just looked out and he just had that feeling like yeah. I'm going to get ground to a pulp by the next tsunami that, yeah, that yeah, out yeah. what am I what have I done you know I've killed myself you know and he, and he, he luckily he got out of the water before the next one came and came back up and was, it was just I went I had no idea you went through that Mondi because I was just saying that because that was my last dying thought was your <laughs> was was it the instinct to grab a board because it was a flotation device yes. to keep you alive so do you think that I mean, there were there were lives lost there, right? Two hundred and forty six souls lost. So, which is unfortunate, but none of the surfers. Correct. Do you think that that's because the surfers are just so used to holding their breaths under a tremendous force of water? Definitely. If I wasn't a surfer, I wouldn't have been in G Land Surf Camp for the tsunami, and I'm glad I was. But I'm glad I was a surfer because I was able to know that I need to hold my breath and conserve my energy as long as I possibly can, and hope that. That will that time will pass, and I will be able to survive this experience. Yeah, if I wasn't a sur- if Simon Law, myself, Robbie Bain, if we weren't surfers, we would have been killed, as just for sure, because yeah. we were underwater the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching that film just made me think, wow, would I have survived that? You know, yeah. To waking up, waking up from a dead sleep to being underwater. That's what it was. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It didn't happen to everybody. Some people got pushed out of their shacks with and tumbled with the surge mm-hmm. up into the jungle. Mm-hmm. But the jungle was, bam, you know, elephant bamboo. And so they were ripped to shreds by the thorns of the bamboo. Wow. And they immediately went into shock because they thought they were being mauled by tigers. Oh, It's called wow. Tiger Camp yeah. okay. also. And okay. there's tigers, many tigers out, of, out, of, out there. And especially back then, the lure was, you know, like, you're, that we, we're living in stilts, so the tigers don't eat us yeah, tonight. Yeah. You know, we're not living on the ground. But these people got tumbled out and just ripped to shreds in the middle of the night, and they went into shock thinking, I'm being mauled by a tiger. Where I was like, I'm underwater. I don't know why the whole world opened up. I'm going to hold my breath for the last possible t- second. And then, then I str- I know what happens when you drown. You struggle at the very end. You can wait as long as you can. But when you're about to inhale right, a bunch of right. water you want to str- you struck invol- it's involuntary yeah and i'm lucky i did because i ripped my net you know and things worked out in my favor but those kids just thought they were getting killed by <laughs> eaten yeah. alive by a tiger <laughs> so they're sh- they went into shock i don't think i went into sh- i didn't go into shock i was like oh fuck that was gnarly yeah i could i just barely made Whew, i got i made it though yeah but i went you know we all suffered afterwards it's of pretty course. traumatic and going back there must have been Hell of an experience! Like all of you guys are bonded by this event. Yeah. So, what is that like now when you see these guys? You know, I I hadn't thought about it very much in, unless someone asked me, and it didn't come up very often. So, going back there and hearing the stories, and sitting down and talking to people, and seeing the documentary that Monty Weber did, where I learned new things. You know, because these people are talking about things. You know, I wish that was longer. He should make a longer version of it because yeah, he's got a lot of material that we are in, that's interesting. I'd love to see a longer version of that. But yeah, no, it was spirit. It was powerful. Yeah, it was one yeah. of the most powerful events. It caught me by surprise how powerful it was, and I will be forever, you know, in you know, bonded with these people yeah, since that yeah. reunion. I thank Bobby Radiasa for having that because I, you know. I, I live here. They're all Australian. Okay. You know, very yeah. few Americans yeah. go over yeah. there. It's mostly Australians. And, you know, now I am I can communicate with these guys online and stuff and stay in touch. And I'm going to go back again this year. I, I mean, I always go back to G-Land. But um, that now I'm going to make a point of going every year. Yeah. I'm going to go there for my 60th birthday this year. I'll be in G-Land, Bobby's Camp, G-Land. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And you know, they're having the contest there. Oh, are they? Yeah, the WCT contest returns to G-Land this year. Oh, very nice. June, I think. Very nice. So on the car, we were talking about your travel. You know, something that I find interesting is I associate you as 100% surfer. You, 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 you travel to surf, but you recently went to Switzerland, and I found the juxtaposition of you on a mountaintop 
<laughs> rather interesting. You were posting some really beautiful videos and photos of Switzerland. It looked amazing. What brought you there? Well, Switzerland is, without a doubt, the most beautiful place I've ever been. And I happen to have a friend who has a magnificent house on a lake in a beautiful town. So that's their view. That's their that view. That lake you're is at. amazing. That lake. Yeah. And he recently sold it. And it but it takes a year plus to sell this house. It's, okay. it's this classic beautiful chateau from the thirties or something. And, you know, their kids are away. Their kids have gra- they're in college, you yeah, know, they're yeah, away from yeah. home. So they're like, well, okay, you know, we've, we, we've been camping here for 20 something years. They've become Swiss citizens and everything. He's from California and she's from England. And is he coming back here or probably maybe they don't okay. know where they're going to okay. go. But he said, John, if you're going to, you know, come out here, you should come because we sold the house and we're not going to have it forever. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll be right there. So, I mean, I lost my house in the fire and I, he, he said, you can come and live here. Just come here and live here. It's free and it's, there's so much to do. I'll take you everywhere. We'll do everything. We'll do everything there is to do in Italy yeah, and yeah. Switzerland and France. Just live here until the house is sold. And I'm like, well, I can't really don't want to do that, but <laughs> thank you. So generous. So, yeah, I mean, I'm like looking for things to do. I'd committed to travel and do things and see things and go places because I didn't have a home. Yeah. I was free. I had a passport, though. I, you know, so it, it was a perfect opportunity for me to travel and see things because usually yeah I go on surf trips if there's any time to go that was the time yeah it worked out so well I mean and I loved it there and I paddled on that lake I took pictures of and I went up into the mountains and I fucking we went to Italy and Croatia I had I love it there do you feel that is it something that because you're always in the the ocean, it, it's just so different? Is it one of those kind of things? Yeah, I like different things. I lo- I used to go to Europe when I was younger, not to surf, just to go to museums and look at the old buildings and 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 I come around again where that's fun for me again. Yeah, I uh, did. I also spent you know a long time up in Mammoth lo- learning how to snowboard. Okay, that that year too. I kept. Going, okay. I went up to Mammoth every other every week for a yeah, couple yeah, days and yeah. snow and learned how to snowboard June and Mammoth and stuff. So, I you know great place to learn. Yeah, <laughs> I had. Uh, I you know I would go back to surfing. You know when I don't surf for two to eight weeks, you know, and I I miss it. Uh, my body misses the rough and tumble of surfing. Sure, sure. There's nothing like it. I mean, I ride my motorcycle every day, and it. It is similar in that there's adrenaline, there's danger, there's flow, there's leaning, yeah. there's speed. You feel the wind. You're looking around. It's I love riding my motorcycle. There's a similar thing, but you can't fall. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I didn't surf for weeks, I I miss getting caught inside. I miss the the rough and tumble of surfing. There's nothing like it. And it's my favorite thing. But I still I like to do other things. I'm not. Sure. I want to travel and see other things that I have nothing to do with surfing. You know, Jerry Lopez famously moved to Bend, Oregon. Yeah. And I always thought that that was odd that he would pick such a... Snowboarding over surfing. Yeah. Well, I guess that's what it is. But, but I mean, he was he was Mr. Pipeline. Yeah. You know, and, and the fact that he moved so far away, it was just it was an odd thing to me. I think he discovered snowboarding and that feeling... Snowboarding is mag- that's why I did it because Jerry, you know, that's why I took it up because okay, Jerry loves yeah. it so much, and so I, yeah, I love it too. Yeah, it's I had to break some bad habits though because, you know, when I surf, when when I fall, I know I'm falling into water, but when you're snowboarding, and and because of that, I had a tendency to not put my hands up when I needed to, and so when I first learned to snowboard and I was getting really aggressive at it, this was in my twenties, obviously, um, I was taking a lot of hard f- falls. You know, but wow, I won't do yeah. that. I, I mean, like now, now you know, I've I've learned to adjust, right? But, yeah. So, uh, you know, the last time we chatted, you had told me, and this was for a movie screening at uh, Huntington Beach for North Shore. Yes. Right. And you had told me, uh, yeah, you know what? Call me in like six weeks. I'm going to Switzerland for six oh, weeks. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, wow, six weeks. That's yeah. pretty cool. It is, man. It was so great. 
I mean, I loved it. And I would go back again, like in a heartbeat, but I, I don't know when to do yeah, it because yeah. I'm here. I live here now and I, I've got a bunch of work to do. And I'm in this class action lawsuit with the SCE about the Woolsey fire. And I've got a bunch to do a bunch oh, of work. Wow. And then I'm going to go back to G land in the yeah, middle of yeah. April okay. for my birthday and to be at G land camp, you know, when I turn 60 and through April and into May. And then I'll come back and I don't, you know, I've got, I don't know. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, so I can't just go for si- but six weeks to Switzerland. But God, was that magic and That's great! Awesome. I took I a was bazillion jealous. pictures. I was totally jealous. I posted it every day. I've never been there, and so I had to live vicariously through the stuff you were posting. It's pretty as it looks. Looked really great. Let's transition to talking about your movies. Okay, my movies. So, my new movies. Yeah, or we'll talk about movies. those too. So I want to start though. I have to start with North Shore. Oh. So the last time that. I saw you, as Mm -hmm. I mentioned, was at a screening of the North Shore at Gallagher's in Huntington Beach. And you were there with Gregory Harrison. That's right. And I'm curious what it feels like for you as somebody that, that's probably, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, the character you're most known for. Yeah, Am I right about that? Yeah, Turtle. So... What's it like to still be, and I put this in air quotes, touring, so to speak, Off for of that. yeah, from that for that <laughs> character, right? It's been like three decades. Yeah. Well, it never it it never get it, ha- it doesn't get old because it didn't start happening till you know twenty five years after we made okay. the film. Okay. So it wasn't like you know we all forgot about it. It wasn't a hit. And we you know never you know thought about it again. But then twenty five years after we made it, people started appreciating it you know it, two generations and we, that we didn't know about because we never thought about it me and Gregory and Matt Adler didn't even surf and he was trying to forget about that movie for decades but it came into our attention when people started inviting us to these screenings and we went wow there's a fan base that have watched this movie there's, on VHS there's a and, huge and fan cable. Base. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't, you know, so now we know about that. There's no excuse. We know about that. I remember inviting Matt to a screening going, you're not going to believe this. He brought his wife and his kid and he, there was love in the room and he had, he had not, he didn't know that. And now he's totally back into surfing and he's coming. I wish he would have been yeah, at that, that screening, but we will do a bunch of things together now. Me, Greg and Matt, we all surf now and we're all fan, you know, fans of surfing yeah, and yeah. and and we like doing things, you know, that have to do with North Shore for people that are interested. So we'll we'll be doing a lot more of those things now that that movie's become what it's become. But it it that that, that happened over time, and I think it's great. I mean, it's shocking. It, every year is different. I mean, I don't, but it's well, I love it. It's totally cool. When we're doing something for charity, we're raising money for Huntington Beach High School, and what we did was we sat up and watched the movie and narrated back behind the scenes things while that, we're watching yes. the movie and that's fun. You have to do that again because yes. that is better than the director the director's commentary that you see on the DVD is yeah. so much better that way you get so much trivia from and all the questions that maybe people have you answer before they even know to ask those questions, yeah. right? It's a way better way to do things and that that's the way you know than a Q&A afterwards which is boring and everybody says <laughs> Everybody says the same stuff, and yeah. But a narrating while it's going on because everyone who's there has seen the movie ten times. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. It's way. It ten was so times. much. Fun. Come on, man! They've seen it a hundred times. Okay, a hundred times. <laughs> the, <clears throat> what do you think it is about Turtle that makes him so infectious, iconic? You know, you're probably the most quoted character from that movie. And, and it's a highly quotable movie. You, I could quote that movie from beginning to end, but the I'd people like that hear the, the people that. that quote that movie quote probably Turtle the most. It's possible. I don't know. I'll say that I definitely had most of the good lines. You you had, know, yeah, you had, had, you had a, all the best lines. I had this colorful <laughs> character that got had all these great lines and went through all this stuff, whereas everyone else had to be really sincere and honest and straightforward. You know, the, the Hui guys had some great lines, yeah. you know, and the, and the local Hawaiians had all the great lines, like Scrub It Kook, you know, that's right, a right. fucking classic. And <laughs> he's so howly, he don't even know he howly. That's I mean, right. there's great lines in that movie, great lines. But Turtle, you know, 
had a bunch of them that are applicable because he takes a newcomer surfing. He shows a newcomer the ropes of the North Shore. Yeah, he yeah. Ex- talks about women. You know, this. You know, I get to be the person who's teaching him yeah, in yeah. the beginning, and then it becomes Gregory Harrison. But uh, so yeah, I had all these great fun lines, and Brian King had probably written or come up with or said or said I should say and. And, and Brian he, King, for our listeners that don't know, is the quote unquote the real term. Yeah, right? he, he was he he got these writers to to you know he helped form that screenplay, and the character of Turtle was based basically on him. Like oh, because all that he was just a wealth of information, and he was also a funky character with an artistic and really intelligent and really artistic and funky, but he's not an actor. But he's the real character, yeah. you know, and he still lives on the, he, you know, he left the North Shore, he went to Berkeley for a while, and then he went to Manhattan, New York, you know, he saw the towers come down, he was a full artist in wow. New York. He actually so he went he turned and, into Rick Kane. Yeah, yeah. But after the towers came down, he moved back to Hawaii, you know, and he yeah, makes surfboards, yeah. and he lives on the North Shore. He's a, he's a legend, and so, yeah, he contributed to that screenplay, and, and I 100% went to school on Brian King to make that character come to life. You know, he yeah, handed yeah. me that character, and I, I just loved it. It was gold, mining for gold, you know. Yeah. So I, I'm really lucky that I got to play that and that he, I had a source like Brian King to steal from yeah, and yeah. put on the screen. I, yeah, you're right. Because yeah. that, that's the Hollywood way. Okay. <laughs> and you have a bond with these guys now too, just like the guys you have from Gland. What guys? The cast? The, the, yeah, the North oh, Shore guys. With I mean, like with you know, uh, last time we talked, you told me that Rick Adler is your best friend. Yeah, Matt and, Adler. And who? I'm, I'm sorry, Matt Adler. Rick Kane. Rick Matt Kane. Adler. Matt Adler. Rick Kane. Matt Adler is your best friend. Yeah. And thirty years later, thirty plus years he is later, 30, right? Over thirty years. I mean, like uh, you look back and you think, uh, you know, for someone like me who watches this movie. You know, we know it's a movie, and they're they're great friends in the movie. But who would have thought that three decades later they're still hanging out? Yeah, nobody, nobody thinks those kind of things, and especially in Hollywood. You know, you make, uh, you know, it's very rare, but it happens. We're like a family now because of, you know, you know that site. Listen to Turtle. Yeah, yeah. So this great peop- these great people in Ventura do this this thing, and they they're fans of the film. And they'll post pictures of Matt on Matt Adler's birthday and on Gregory Harrison, and and they they're we're like a family now. Yeah, with Listen to Turtles, you know, has joined that family, and you know, Nia Peoples and Laird Hamilton and everybody they talk about everybody, and you know, because of the what's happened with that film, I'll always be connected with those people, which yeah. is very rare in a movie. You know, you usually make you might make one friend and it might last a little while, but we're friends for life. For yeah. sure, for life. And, and I, I've got another movie like that, Return of the Living Dead. We're a family now. I did this oh, movie really? in the okay. 80s, yeah. this horror movie, and we didn't see each other afterwards for 20 years, and then it became a horror movie cult classic, yeah. and we started touring the United States. They, they all, it's, horror is different from surfing. We we fly out to every state. In, do you do like in, cons? Like, yeah, and yeah. do horror cons, yeah. but we're together, and we, we, we get together to do those, and we've we've known each other for 30 years, and... We always go out to dinner and stay in this hotel, and we love each other. It's a great thing. I love hearing that. You've played so many different characters. You've played from Turtle. You went uh, to go on to play Nathaniel in Point Break, another surfer. Yeah. Surfer bank robber. Yeah. And then you were in a Western with Tombstone. You played Tom McClurry. Yeah. Um, Chuck in Return of the Living Dead. Uh, Amos in Children of the Corn. All these different characters. And... At what I'm doing is I'm transitioning to this new film that oh, yeah. you've got on Amazon Prime. Where you, now you're not even playing a character; you're just playing yourself. It seems. <coughs> well, Undateable John. Let's talk about Undateable John. Okay. So where did you see Undateable John? I saw it on Amazon. Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. How much did it cost? Oh, I think it was like three dollars. Did you $3. rent $3. it or buy it? I rented it and then I watched it again. So, oh, I, so when could. it first when it first came out, I rented it. And then um, maybe two days ago, after you and I talked that we were going to be recording, yeah. I thought I'm going to watch it again. So I watched it again. So ev- anybody, that's nothing. Anybody can rent that movie and see it. Yeah, yeah. I did paid you like? More, it? I paid more for lunch that day. Yeah. Did, did you? Did, were you entertained? Oh, I was entertained. So I let me say this, <laughs> and I was telling you this in the car. I almost forgot how hot Estella Warren was. Uh, so she is. She's, is is yes, not was is, and let let's listen. To listen to this list of the cast, we have Estella Warren, 
Tom Arnold, Daryl Hannah, Joan Jett, Margaret Cho, Meredith Baxter, Russell Simmons, Holy Shannon Doherty. Shit. Right? Yeah. So I'm watching this thing and I'm thinking, oh my God, like there's so many people in yeah. this movie. That's what I felt. That's what I thought. Yeah, so it started that you want to talk about me to talk about my experience yeah, making yeah, yeah. that movie. How, so how, I hadn't how, acted in 15, 20 years. Okay. I just quit and I was teaching surfing and I got kind of got my shit together and someone, Sin Posner, had developed this short story about her experiences and Sin Posner's this really talented writer producer and she said hey John would you be interested in doing a short film where you play this guy from in recovery who has a bad relationship and I'm like me she goes yeah would you be interested in acting in something I go I haven't acted in 20 something she's like yeah would you I'm like yes I'd love to that'd be great and it just started as a little thing we were going to film on phones. And we started talking and I started doing dialogue with her. And she goes, oh, that's great. And writing it down. And she goes, what would you do in this situation? I would t- talk. And she wrote all this stuff down that was that came out as a, as a full-length script and said, you know, we could do this as a full-length script. And I go, well, I mean, go for it. And she goes, no, no, I want you to, to play this guy. I'm like, it was written for you. I well, mean, like this guy it was like he's apparently. A, it turns out that it was written for me. Initially, it was written about someone I know. Oh, okay, okay. And I said, I'm not going to play this guy because this is a true story about what happened to someone. And originally, and it was a friend, as a person I know. And I go, I'm not going to play this person I know in this program, this anonymous program, having a negative experience. I won't do it. I'll play some. You know, I'll play a, my version of a someone going through these things and so we just adapted the character to someone who's got my interest surfing teaching surfing she's just such a good writer she just you know we just talked and she knows me and she just wrote this screenplay you know it has a lot of stuff going on but I just happened to give my contribution to it so that I could do it you know I didn't have to create some thing you know and as it turns out, yeah, the character is similar to me, but not me. I mean, people well, 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 play, his name's John, he <laughs> right. teaches surfing, <laughs> he's in recovery, but I, you know, I am not that character by any stretch of the so, imagination. <laughs> when I was watching it, because I know you, the, yeah. the scene where you had to borrow a suit to yeah. go on a date, right. I could totally see you doing that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, she... <laughs> I, thank you, because I've I've never had to do that. Uh, okay. I mean, people, I'm nothing like that character that they've written. But but I so it is it is acting. I, but people look at it and they go, "Where you're not acting? You're just playing yourself." And I'm like, "Well, I would never be in that situation. I've never been in that situation." I mean, people play versions of themselves in movies now, like De Niro. I'm not you know I'm comparing myself to De Niro, but he'll play a caricature of himself you know and sure, get, you know and sure. other work and refer to work he's done brando did it you know referring back to the godfather he's played you know they'll they'll play these versions that people that are self-referential but it's still acting you're not like you're not do, you know you haven't done that you're 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 reading lines that someone else wrote for you working off an actor sure, who's sure. in a situation that you've never been in you know, with a director and trying to make it fit into a, you know, a, a plot, you know, a, a narrative of a, of a journey. So it's not like a reality show. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I get it. <laughs> it's script. It's a, it's every line. was in a script, yeah. you know, and none of those, situ- I, like I've never been in the situations that that guy goes through, you know, with his Meredith Baxter, with Stella Warren, you know, it, it was just not even the part where she was trying to take not, the wetsuit off. That was and the you got- first time. Yeah, <laughs> that is such a great scene, and I want everybody to see. Everyone it. needs to see this, and that was my favorite. So should I say what happened? But I loved it. I was jealous of you. You were when she was pulling off the. You uh, were? She was what? pulling off the, uh, the 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 wetsuit top, uh, and you're. Uh, you know what I need to do? I mean, yeah. I haven't done this and I need to do this. So over the years that I wasn't an actor and I was teaching surfing, I would go to surf come and I'm a freegan and I love swag. But I used to be an actor, so I'd go to these surf companies and say, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, no, you're a turtle. 
I'm like, yeah, well, I might, I might be doing this other little thing, you know, like, would you be interested in placing some product or could I get a board for like, and they're like, yeah, fuck yeah, turtle. You can, you can have this, you know, we'll give you the bro yeah, deal. Man. Here's you're, some yeah, wetsuits. You're legendary, you're, bro. You're, yeah, you're turtle. So I collected all these cool shit, wetsuits, posters, surfboards. And then I got to be in a movie and play a surf instructor. Yeah, and I had yeah. I if you look at the scenes in my room, I've got all this fucking swag that I had collected as a free game. So that's all your stuff. That's yeah, all my stuff. Oh, nice. <laughs> so people think well, that's your stuff and that's your board and that's your. I'm like, yeah, I know. So that's you. You're playing. I'm like, no, no, I'm not playing me. <laughs> but that's all my stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They, it, they it really borrows from my life yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. But I was I want to thank. I think that wetsuit that I took off of Estella Warren is an O'Neill top. Okay. Thank you, O'Neill. I think I wear a Matusse wetsuit in one scene. Thank you, Matusse. I ride a Hayden Shape board in one scene. Thank you, Hayden Shapes. I ride a Chris Christensen board in the opening scene and carry it around in Venice with Joan Jett. I smoke a joint with Joan Jett holding a Chris Christensen surfboard. Thank you, Chris Christensen. You know, there's so there's soft top boards in it that I give lessons on. There's so many things that people have been generous with me because I used to be an actor in the surf movies that I have collected over the years yeah. that I place in this movie with pride because he's a sur he's a real yeah. this guy's yeah. a real surfer. He's a real surfer. And like and so am I. And so I got to show all those things, you know, that were they're mine, you know, but I've got them from these great companies that have been generous, you know. Body Glove gave me some great stuff. Matus, O'Neill, Rip Curl, Hayden Shapes, Chris Christensen, you know, yeah, soft top yeah. stuff. Great stuff, and it's all over this film. Yeah. I love it. It was a fun film. It actually made me think, are we going to get more from Undateable John? Oh, there has to be a sequel, yeah, right? Yes. It is set up yes. for a sequel. Yes, it totally is. And, and when it ended, I thought, is that it? Is that it? I is that it? Love that. I wanted more. So, yeah, so we need to tell the powers that be to continue that story yeah we, we I would love to you yeah, know it's hard yeah. to get a million dollars together to make a movie that n doesn't even come out in the screens you know it's but digital distribution deals are you know common well, these days that's, people yeah, watch that's, movies on their phones I think that's the new wave yeah you know? it's a new wave yes. so so I'm me and the right Sin Posner and I are 100% game to make a sequel yeah. to that movie yeah we think it's ready we've written half the sequel Okay, so then so I'm, should I ask? I want to. Well, I'll wa I'll wait to watch. Yeah, wait. Yeah. So let's talk about what else you have happening here in 2020. 2020. Well, I you know I did this movie called Ghost Babe, which is I think going to be so funny, but I don't know if it's ever going. to... It's another digital distribution thing. But I go, I'm so over the top with this great character that I love. Now that I'm kind of on a roll, I did this movie White Wolves after Undateable John, and I play this kind of like the dude character you know older wiser kind of he's actually a ghost talking to this guy okay. and White Wolves is a short film and it's really really a beautiful movie and it's winning a bunch of film festivals you gotta watch that on Vimeo and I don't know I mean if someone wants to see it they have to call me and say I will send them a link to watch White Wolves it's okay. available on Vimeo I wanna see it you do? yeah yeah of course alright I'll show so, I'll, so I'll, get, I'll send, send you the me a link. link yeah and uh, and then I did this movie Ghost Ghost Babe, and I hope it comes out and really fun working. With and and these that's guys all done now. Is it? It's in, done. It's it in, in post, post but okay. post is it's hard to do to get the kind of money you need to do post on a di on a low budget digital film, mm. you know, that doesn't have a distribution deal. But I hope they get it because I want to see it because yeah. it's fun for me. Yeah, to I'd see like it. to see it too. Yeah, me I'd too. I'd like to see it too. Well, I want to say thank you. Again, for oh, that, if we spending so spending much fun, the, all I, of a I know it's I over. always I always enjoy spending time with you. <laughs> I love before we you wrap, before things. we wrap, so you I'm, got a cut. You got something for I you. have something for I you. You always do, man. <laughs> I love your shit. It's so cool. So the last time that I saw you, I gave burned you in the fire. Yeah, I gave you a mug that just that would burn <laughs> in the fire. And I asked you about it. I said, burned "Did you saw that mug?" You said, "No, it's gone. It's gone." Now I don't have a mug right now, but I do have. As a surfer, you have <gasps> to have yeah, you do. You have to have one of these tiki necklaces yes, right you now. Do. So this is this is the mascot for that's my a, podcast. It's so beautiful. That's a traditional Hawaiian coup with a microphone head. No way. It, to represent that's, the yes, podcast microphone, right? Awesome, so we, I call him the Talking Head, and unlike Greg Brady, he is not 
going to bring you bad luck. He's going to bring you good luck. Thank you so much. That is beautiful. But that's for you, you know, to get you started stuff. again on uh, on the fan gifts and the fan art and oh, all that kind of stuff. It'll be in my right? next movie. I will oh, place I'd love it in the that. Background that would be great. That would film. be great. So you don't have to, but I just wanted to give you something since the, so since kind. the mug I gave you last time is long gone. Long gone. Is there anything you want to promote while I've still got you on the mic? I have to promote. I still teach surfing, prosurfinstruction.com. Okay. So if people want to... Yeah, if they want to take a surf lesson, they, they can go lesson? to prosurfinstruction.com. Everybody, I want to see Undateable John and, and White Wolves and then hopefully Ghost Babe. And it's fun to have a life, to be alive and have another chance at things, you know? Like, yeah. it's really fun to, to be healthy and alive and have an opp- have these opportunities, and, this and just is to I say did, yes, you and be have open to such saying a yes. positive perspective on life. Well, I mean, I'm lucky. I've yeah. been very lucky, and I'm grateful. And we love lo- our lives. Yeah, you know, yeah, we, yeah. we're so lucky, and yeah. just to be appreciative of that. That's everything, and so yeah, I've, I'm really, I've been very lucky, and I'm very grateful. Someone about needs it. to do a story on you. I think that you have you lived just such did a, one. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we need to do a film or something. I mean, like everything that you've gone oh, about through my in your real life. life. Yeah, it's yeah, I don't it's think that'd be it's very awesome. Interesting. Oh, I think a million it, other I think, people. I think, we all have these. Interesting I think people lives. would disagree with that. I think people would really enjoy. Oh, you're always so your kind. story. But you're so thank you again so you're much. So kind. I appreciate it. It's always fun talking to you. Thank Let's you. Do it again in another year. I love that. I love that. I will call you in a year and we'll see where you are then cool awesome and for all our listeners out there have any questions comments or just want to leave a shout out for john you can do that on our group page on facebook inside the desert oasis room you can stop by our instagram page at polynesian pop john your instagram page john philbin and a little underscore thing if they type in at john John philbin with a little underscore all right, very cool. Okay, so I have one request. Okay. And you don't have to do this. Can That's you, good. Can you still talk like Turtle nope, at all? I can't, no, I can't, but you can because you've seen the movie a hundred times. I'd rather hear you do it than me. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Let, let me think about my favorite line. Um, when, when, uh, so I, I use some of the lines. So I got this rash on my uh, I elbow. I see, you are rashed up. So bro. this is from skateboarding. And when my wife says, what happened? I say, Refresh, scar for life for sure. <laughs> See, I, that's great. And uh, and then and then when we go eat somewhere, and I take her to a place that she hasn't had before, I do the line that you had, where you showed the surfboard to Rick Kane for the first time. You pulled it out of the closet, and you said, "You like it." <laughs> I can't do the accent like you. No, yes, you can. I can't do the accent. Why would I be able to do that accent? Because that's now? you. That's you. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, uh, how about a gnarly mask? Yeah, like it was the last one. Good. I like that one too. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, okay, I'm going to stop embarrassing myself. Thank you again, John. You're not embarrassing. So, I have one more little tiny story to tell. I mean, you don't need to put this in, but I think, but I was at Channel Islands the other day picking up a board for a client, and they said, hey, would you do like a little ad where you're like, Sanding a board and thing, we'll just put it out there. Like, well, you know, Turtle's getting ready to sand his board. I'm like, yeah, if you if Gregory Harris in it as Chandler or Shaper and Rick Kane standing in the background waiting to see his new board, <laughs> they're like, yeah, that'd be great. So I called them both. I mean, in exchange for a free Channel Islands board, I called Matt. He goes, yeah, I'll do it for a board. And Greg goes, yeah, I'll do it for a board. We're like, we want to go to Channel Islands and do these ad campaign where we're still we're making boards, you know, and they're ch- and Channel Islands puts them out. That's gonna that be would so be so much epic, man. Fucking that epic, would be right? Epic. People epic. will be. Like, People That's will lose hysterical. their shit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's a great idea. It was their idea, and it's really smart. Yeah, That's I think awesome, it's good. So awesome, I'm looking forward yeah. to doing that. Yeah, very I'll do cool. that next week. Very cool. Alrighty, well, we're we're gonna sign off, party people. Okay. Aloha, aloha. <laughs>